All right, Guardian of Compassion, what is your plan? I already put it into action, Zeref. I was originally going to go with Ruby's newest volume, but it's incomplete. So instead, I created a film and put it into his house. So once he views it, it will release his maximum Red Lantern energy. What was it? <laughs> Gonna sect and the Legend Awakened. The final film in the Unova trilogy. This film is an interesting one for me to review because unlike the other Pokemon films I've covered thus far, this is my first time seeing it. No joke. When I first saw the poster for Genesect's film back in 2013, I was like, the hell's the Genesect? That happened to Mewtwo! And wait, why is Mewtwo from the first film back? Needless to say, I hated it. And if the poster sucks, what does that say about the movie itself then? Well, let's find out. The story of this film revolves around the conflict between Red Genesect, who has an army of Genesects, and a Mewtwo. Mewtwo wants the Red Genesect and his group to follow it so that they can find a home, but Red Genesect doesn't want to take orders and mind controls the Genesects to attack Mewtwo. This eventually leads into New Torque City, subtle, and Ash and his group of friends get involved in the skirmish after meeting one of the Genesects and forming a decent bond with it. The battle ends up escalating when the Genesects take control of the National Park in New Torque City to make it its new home because it has some flowers that they like, but this has the unfortunate side effect of the threads they were using to make said nests getting wrapped around the city's generators, causing a massive discharge and threatening to not only black out the city, but also cause chaos if they blow. But in the end, Mewtwo eventually manages to convince Genesect to come with it to find their place in the world after taking it into space. And as for the Genesects finding a place to call home, well, Ash tells them the location of a place the people in charge of the National Park went to in order to transplant some of the flowers the Genesects like, and they decide to make that their new home. With all that said and done, the film ends. Roll credits. So, where do I start with this film? Well, how about the story as a whole? When it comes to the overall story, it's okay. Sure, I do like some of the character interactions and developments, but that's more related to the character element of this film, not so much the story element. But speaking of story, my biggest problem with it was that the conflict between the Genesex and Mewtwo was goddamn stupid, and it shows how stupid it is from the very first scene the two groups meet each other. How does it go? Well, Mewtwo gets a cry for all from one of the Genesects, it saves the Red Genesect's cronies from the Avalanche, and then after calming them down, Mewtwo makes an offer to the Red Genesect after he gets out of the Avalanche to help them find their home. What happens next? The Red Genesect gets pissy and attacks in response, saying it doesn't take orders. Yeah, instead of being thankful to the Mewtwo for saving his comrades' lives and potentially being helpful in finding a place to call home, he attacks the Mewtwo instead and FORCES, NOT TELLS, his comrades to do the same. Yeah, I know that if he sided with Mewtwo, it would end the movie quicker, but there had to be a better reason than, UGH, I HATE ORDERS, because this actually plays into another problem with this conflict. Red Genesect is a terrible character and antagonist. Seriously, this Genesect is stubborn, treats his comrades like shit as shown when he not only mind controls the Genesect to do what he wants, even when they don't want to, and despite his goal of getting his kind to their home, what happens when one of them deactivates slash dies? He doesn't care! He still keeps his target on the other Pokemon, like nothing happened! What the fuck? And as for his refusal to accept Mewtwo's offer, what happens at the end of the film again? Well, after just looking at the planet, he is easily swayed and joins Mewtwo. Just like that! It's almost like his motivation to hate Mewtwo was stupid or something! Oh yeah? Well, what would you have done then, David? I ask this because that seems to be a common argument when attacking slash responding to critics. Alright, you wanna play that game? I'm in. I will give a couple ideas on what I would have done to try and give this character a better motive to hate Mewtwo than Ugh, I hate orders. Number one, and this is an easy one, requires barely any edits. How the Red Genesect hate Mewtwo because Mewtwo failed to rescue it during the avalanche scene. That way, he actually has a reason since he was the only one not safe from the avalanche and it could potentially create some tension between the two. Yeah, I know that still raises the problem that he didn't seem to protect his comrades and the avalanche was coming down, but hey, I never said I was trying to make the character better, I was saying I was trying to make the motive better. And number two, have the Genesects hate all Pokemon except their own kind, and that's why they refuse Mewtwo's offer. Not only could that potentially serve as a decent reason for the conflict, since Mewtwo wants to protect Pokemon and Genesex hates them, but it could also potentially show us more of the Genesex backstory and why Red Genesect is the leader. Hell, instead of forcing the Genesex to attack, maybe they have them attack willingly because they respect their leader. I know, what an absurd concept. And as for the ending, well, as predictable as this may be, Maybe have the Red Genesect see the Pokemon as well as humans helping out his comrades before Mewtwo goes into space, and then have Genesect realize he was wrong inside with Mewtwo. 
No, these aren't perfect ideas, and I'm sure someone could see the flaws with them. But at least I tried to come up with a reason that wasn't, I don't want to side with Mewtwo because I don't take orders. I'm sorry, I still can't get over that. That's fucking stupid. I could go on, but... I think you get the idea by now. The villain sucks, and the reason for this conflict sucks. And given how the conflict plays a major part in this film, having a shitty reason for it ends up hurting the movie more than helping it. <sighs> As for the characters, there's not much to say about them aside from Magic's group of Mewtwo slash Genesex Army. So let's start with Mewtwo, because I'm sure some of you who haven't seen this film might have some questions. Such as, why is Mewtwo acting like this? Wasn't he kind of a dick in the first film? Well, yes, but here's the thing. This Mewtwo is not the same Mewtwo from the first movie, which apparently angered slash confused a lot of people when this film was first announced. As for me, well, when I finally got the chance to see this film and not the poster, I figured it wouldn't be the same Mewtwo from the first film, because after all, these films are barely connected to each other in the first place, save for the Diamond and Pearl trilogy, so why would they start connecting them now? But I digress. Now, despite the two Mewtwo sharing a similar origin, these two are completely different characters when you look at their powers and personality. For instance, this Mewtwo is not set on killing all humans. Instead, it basically ignores them and focuses on helping Pokemon. Because to this Mewtwo, it views humans as distrustful and cruel and would rather avoid them than try to form bonds with them. Hell, as the film goes on, we get to see more to this character. So that's just how it felt that it had no place in the world at first, then after some local Pokemon saved its life, it felt like it had a purpose. And hell, despite all the shit that Red Genesec does to Mewtwo in this film, it is still able to sympathize with the Red Genesec and his cronies because they also want to find a place in this world and is still willing to help them find it. I like that. Not only because it showcases more layers to this character, but it also showcases how determined this character is to accomplish this goal it set out for the Genesex. And hell, despite its distrust with humans, Mewtwo does in fact show signs of anger at points when they are affected, such as during the climax when the Red Genesec attacks and damages some buildings that may or may not house humans. Uh, a few scenes later, it teleports away from an attack and lets a building get hit, but hey, it gets development eventually, and by the end of the film, it begins to like humans again, so that's good. So yeah, I actually do like Mewtwo's character in this one. It has a decent personality, I like the use of its powers, and I liked its character arc. I know some may argue that it shouldn't be able to mega evolve since it doesn't have a stone, but to be fair guys, this was released before Gen 6, so the method of mega evolution wasn't established yet. Plus, the games and anime didn't always mesh well together, so I could buy the transformation working here, especially since Mewtwo in this film was pretty damn strong. As for Genesex Army, well, you already heard my opinion of Red Genesex, so I will not repeat it here, but as for his cronies, I will be bitching about them here. Well, at least three of them, because the Dostar of Genesect is actually pretty decent character-wise, and I do like his bond with Ash as the film goes on. But back to these three. Look, I'm gonna say it flat out. These three have no character in them. At least the Dostar of Genesect has that bond with Ash and has a voice to express his worries and homesickness to the others. These three have barely anything. They have no personality. They barely have a voice. They just serve to be Red Genesex Armory in all honesty. As for Team Rocket... Okay, quick side note here. I know I didn't mention them in the last movie, but that was because they were in the background in the opening credits. As such, I didn't see a need to mention them since that was pretty much their only appearance. This film, on the other hand, reversed them to being wasted and unfunny once again. They do shit that doesn't affect the plot in any way, and then get blasted off by Durant's. That's it. What a waste. Oh, and speaking of waste, let's talk about Ash's group for a bit. Yeah, I know I praised this film for the bond between Ash and Genesect earlier, but outside of that, and Ash helping the Genesect slash Mewtwo find the new home at the end, Ash and his group's contributions were really small this time around. And to be honest, it's kind of a double-edged sword for me. Because on the one hand, I do like Mewtwo as a character, and it does mean that Ash isn't saving the day this time around. But on the other hand, Ash is the main character of the anime series, as well as most of these movies. He is usually the one who saves the day in these movies, save for the last film. So when I see Ash's group not contribute much to the climax of this film, save for the scenes with him in the Dallas Drive Genesect, as well as supplying the location of their home, it's kind of odd for me to take in, because I'm so used to seeing Ash be the one to save the day in these films. And yeah, I know that he also tries to get Mewtwo and the Red Genesec to stop fighting, but aside from maybe changing Mewtwo's mind about humans, it doesn't really mean much when you consider the fact that it was Mewtwo bringing Red Genesec into space and showing off the planet that made Genesec change his mind. So in the end, it wasn't Ash who stopped the conflict, it was Mewtwo. And what I described was all that Ash did. Silent and Iris were pretty much useless in the climax of this film and don't have much character to them either. So that's not a good sign. So yeah. When it comes to the cast this time around, Mewtwo and Dowse Drive Genesect were my favorites and the rest were either shit 
or just meh. Moving on to animation, it looks pretty good to me. Character models are pretty good, the backgrounds look nice, the coloring and lighting is pretty good, the effects and camera angles during the flight as well as fight scenes look pretty good, and even the CGI is decent again. Music wise on the other hand, it takes a hit. I'm sorry, but while a lot of the tunes certainly fit the tone and atmosphere of the scene, it's not that memorable to me, even when listening to it on its own. Except for, once again, the opening and ending. I felt that the opening had a catchy tune and rhythm and decent lyrics, and I felt like the ending was a really well done piece to listen to. The soft guitar, the rhythm, the lyrics, and even on the visual side, I feel it works as a decent farewell to those watching the Unova anime as they showcase all the Unova rivals, the gym leaders, and even former allies like again but I think it's time I wrap this up. Overall, I did not really like this movie. Sure, Mewtwo and Dash Drive Genesect were great to watch, and the animation was pretty good, but two characters in animation cannot make up for a mess story, a shitty villain, a shitty cast outside of those two characters, and mediocre music. If you're a Pokemon fan and you haven't seen it yet, I would suggest giving this film a shot, but for everyone else, I would suggest skipping this one. So yeah, in terms of ranking these, and I just now realized I forgot to rank the Sinnoh films, I would say that Victini's is the worst, Genesect is in second place, and Caldeo is in first place. But with the end of the Innova trilogy, that leaves only one trilogy of films left, the Kalos trilogy. So will they surpass the Innova trilogy? I mean, Kalos did have a pretty good anime in my humble opinion. Or will it suck? Well, only time will tell. I'm the Mountie, and next time we meet, I'll be reviewing Diancy and the Kakuna Destruction. See you then. Meanwhile... What? I don't understand. How? How is it that he didn't go all out after seeing that film? What is the meaning of this? I guess David had a lot more control than we thought. <clears throat> or maybe I lied about creating a film that would make him transform. Agent Zeref, you were under arrest for the kidnapping of Mark Sirium and Andrew Green, as well as the murder of Vincent Grimm. <laughs> well played. I will give you that. So... How'd you know it was me? Funny you mention that. I work for the same company as David, and I have the same boss. Damn. You know, it's funny. You knew of my location, yet you didn't know about my job and my associates. If you had, then you would have known this was a trap the minute I agreed to help you. And with your capture, the boss will probably give me a bonus, because you've been a royal pain in our side for a while. Very well. I'll come quietly. Something, Something seems, seems off. This is the, the same, same man who supposedly teleported away, away from David and Andrew, and, and was, was able, able to, to capture, capture the, the green and orange lanterns. lanterns. So, so why, why is he acting so calm about, about this? this? Is, is this, this part of his plan? plan? <sighs> no, no, I can't, I can't question, question it. it. He, he must, must be brought, brought in. in. Let's go.